We have done a video about the casual outfits, and now it's time to talk about some of the most iconic looks from the show. Oh wait, does that count if, like, most of them are iconic? Oh dear. When you have yourself a show where fashion is a core aspect, you simply must have your characters dressed up for an important gala, especially if said gala usually ends in fire and dragon attacks. If you're attending the end of the world, you must dress accordingly. Get some sparkles, make it scintillating to go with the flames. More glitter to cover the blood. Now we'll be talking about any type of formal gowns that the girls have worn throughout the franchise. Note, I said gowns. So while the season one dance outfits are fair game, we will not be including the season two party outfits. As gorgeous as they are. I mean, just look at Musa, look at Aisha. I love them. Nor the season four date outfits. We don't know who they are, except Muses. Muses can stay. So without further ado, let's begin. Your invitation shall be under your seat. By which I mean, it's in your imagination. Um, I couldn't afford the print run. Ever since season 5, the Winx Club's looks have become increasingly more uniform, most often with the same designs, just in different colors. But sometimes, even with one color palette for all of them. Which is atrocious. The season 6 gowns are by far the least recognizable formal looks of the series. Though the designs have slight differences, they don't do enough to help the girls stand out from one another nor stand out as a look on their own. They simply look like traditional, generic princess dresses with generic wing decorations. The only looks here that stand out as genuinely great to me are Musa and Aisha, largely thanks to their hairstyles, and also that their particular color swaps actually wound up working really well for them. I would like more Musa in orange and Aisha in yellow. Yes, please. Season 6 also marked a trend where the designers try to shake things up by trying out different color combinations for each girl which I do appreciate. Some of these changes worked really well. Bloom's lavender gown is pretty cute. It's better than the god-awful pink. And I love Stella in more lunar-inspired blue. But that said, the gowns don't have enough to work with to make the color swaps worth it. Even if they had the girls' usual colors, they would still be boring to behold. And that is the greatest crime in fashion. Not even to be bad, but to be boring. To the electric chair! To the electric chair with these fly wings! Much like the season 6 gowns, the season 5 gowns, dubbed the flower princess looks, suffer from a similarly un similarly uninspired aesthetic. God, that's hard to say. Jesus. None of the gowns say anything about each girl. Rather, the designers tried to spice things up by having the gowns be smothered in flowers. Was this a charity case for Vanessa's failing shop in the midst of the pandemic? No one will know. It honestly looks like someone just covered the girls' dresses in glue and then stuck as many flowers onto the outfits as they could manage. It makes the designs look so cluttered and busy more than anything else. And also, that shit is gonna attract a lot of bees. Do you really want to deal with that? Beyond that, the designs themselves don't have much to offer. I do like some of the hairstyles, especially with Bloom and Stella pulling their hair up for a more sophisticated regal air as they, in the words of the almighty Stella, go politicking. Musa and Aisha again prove that they serve the best in any looks. Jesus, I love them. With those side ponytails giving me so much life. Sonic Wave for life. And it's nice to see Musa in red, even if it's paler than I would have liked. Aisha also rocking the ocean blue. I see you, girl. I see you. Beyond that, there isn't really much to write home about. Again, the worst thing that fashion can do is be boring. To the electric chair also. I may rag on season eight a lot. Deservedly so, especially for the whitewashing. Good God, how did I ever come to excuse this tomfoolery? But the fashion, surprisingly, is not as bad compared to season six and seven, which doesn't take a lot of effort, but it's something. When the ship is sinking, you dash for the life vests, even if they're ratty and full of holes and tears. The season eight gowns are surprisingly eye-catching. They look good together as a unit, but the colors are surprisingly vibrant, 
and the unique belts and trails around the dresses do enough to set the girls apart from each other, along with the cute hairstyles. If they all must look uniform, I feel like this is the best we can do, so I don't know what to tell you. Again, Aisha and Musa look the best. Aisha's hair is absolutely stunning, and it's nice to see her in seafoam green. Thank you, Cinzi, for just suffering what shade of green this is. And my girl Musa is back in red. She's rocking it. The colors in general look so good for each of them. And I appreciate it whenever Bloom wears some darker shades of blue. And there's something about Stella's orange and gold that makes her look almost ethereal. Rose Sweetie over on DeviantArt actually took it upon themselves to sketch up these looks in the original art style, and they did an amazing job. I will link their profile in the description, but it's their take on these gowns that sold me on the look. So thank you, Rose Sweetie. You are the true hero here. Magical Adventure was weird, but strange timeline and pacing issues aside, one thing we must thank it for are the gowns. It's in the older era of the show that we can appreciate some more individualized outfits. Each gown is tailored to the girls' personalities, like the little frills of Flora's dress that look like rose petals. Stunning. And again, Aisha serving the best hair, objectively, in a lively spring green. Queen. Or is it emerald green? It's green, it's nice. And the season four hair for Musa actually looks good here. Even Stella manages to pull off a return to her original hairstyle and make it fit the look perfectly. And can we appreciate the deep oranges of her dress? That said, they're nowhere near the best gowns of the franchise. They're like really good, bordering on great, but that's okay. That's why we have the rest of the list. These gowns deserved better. They were done so dirty. Debuting at the very end of the first movie, only to never be seen again. The whole point of the first three seasons, culminating in The Secret of the Lost Kingdom, was to conclude the original story of saving Domino and undoing the ancestral witch's harm, as well as to show how much the Winx have grown up since the first season. These gowns communicate that growth in spades. They seem deceptively simple at first, but it's the fact that they aren't overly complicated that makes them so compelling. I especially love the darker blues and reds on Bloom and Musa, and the blinding gold of Stella's look as she catches everyone's attention. And for the record, Tecna's blazer is everything. And the fact all the girls are showing off their Enchantix hair really sells that they're at the end of their journey, or rather, the end of this part of their journey. Unfortunately, because of how short-lived these looks were, there isn't much stock art for them, that said, there are 2D versions floating around from, I believe, that old mermaid comic, as well as this gorgeous fan art by Liliadra over on DeviantArt. I apologize if I mispronounced that. Liliadria. Oh god, I think, um, I missed the last I. It's so hard to speak. Anyway, they actually altered the looks a bit to suit their own art style, and the end results are breathtaking. Again, link in description. The older seasons did a wonderful job with looks that were a bit odd, but capturing each girl's personality. They somehow all work together while being completely different from each other. Bloom's blue lace dress is simple and cute, which matches her as the little bean from Earth who doesn't know shit yet. Stella's look is meant to be more alluring and a bit revealing, which like, again, it's Stella. I also love the darker orange against the light blue and the gold for her. Excellent contrast. Very solar and lunar. Flora's look is probably the most regal, focused on her nature aesthetic with laces meant to resemble vines, and the little rose headdress with the pink veil is so adorable. Tecna's is a bit odd, but it does sell her vibe as a sci-fi diva. She just really likes the weird and practical energy, and I have to respect that. Muse's is by far the best, though. The red and purple pink is gorgeous especially with the collar, the headphone-themed bandana, the trailing sleeve cuffs, and the baggy pants. Yes! Masculine and feminine, all at once. Musa is non-binary confirmed. Season 1 deserves more credit on delivering unique, out-there designs that tell you so much about the girls' personalities without saying a damn word. Again, season three just has the best looks. 
I don't make the rules. This look feels like it takes the best of both worlds from the uniqueness of the season one dance outfits and the regal grown up aesthetic of the movie gowns, creating a masterpiece. The girls really look like they've grown up, from the more complicated hairstyles, to the unique dresses tailored to their personalities, to the little details like Aisha's first stole. Again, thank you, thank you, Cincy, for telling me what the f fuck that was. I was like, poofy scarf thing, and Cincy was like, no. No. I also love some of the color departures, with Tecna decked out in all green, while both Aisha and Stella are rocking the deep purples, no problem, but different shades. I especially love Musa letting her hair flow and embracing her feminine side a bit more, and the frickin' strong red. Oh, with, with all the little ornaments and frills. Oh, hers is the best. There's no competition. Bloom's braided hair reads to me like she's still a cinnamon roll, but she's matured a bit and is growing into who she wants to be, while also embracing a little bit of the fairy tale princess aesthetic that she's been dreaming of since she was little. Except she's also a princess who will burn down your house if you cross her or her friends. I'm gonna be using Cindy's word to describe some of these dresses because Cindy understands this better than I, so... <clears throat> Aisha's got a bit of a trumpet skirt going on, while Bloom's empire waist seems Regency era, and the others have a very classic A-line. Do I know what any of that means? Not in the slightest, but the designers clearly did, and that's what matters. I would kill for the looks to go back to the style, where each girl looks unique, and there are more than the generic dresses of the newer seasons. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and it's more laid back energy, it's been nice to make these actually. It's really nice to not have to throw on my back on a gigantic video, um, like the one I'm also currently working on, foreshadowing. Anyway, if you would like to see more content like this from me, then be sure to not only check out my other videos, but also to subscribe and ring that bell for notifications because YouTube hates creators. Say it with me. Say it with me, YouTube hates creators. Also, please consider, if you're willing and able, pledging your support to myself and the channel over on Patreon. I'm the Unicorn of War, and season seven did plaid dirty. I will never forgive that. Thank you.